This is part five of our video lecture series for chapter number four, where we're dealing with IRAs or individual retirement accounts or individual retirement arrangements. There's two different types. Here is the Roth type that's discussed beginning on page 14 of our textbook. And then on page 23, 22, it begins the other type here called individual retirement account or arrangements. But whenever you see the term IRA all by itself, it typically means the other type of IRA called traditional versus the Roth type. We had discussed taking money out or distributions um, in the previous chapter, chapter three, and determining whether it was taxable or not. Here in chapter four, what we're doing is contributing money in, putting money into the IRAs and determining whether we can take a deduction to save taxes. So let's illustrate all of this again. Make sure you take a look back at chapter three's video lecture on IRAs, you know, that supplements this video. So here we have our employer who we work for and they're paying us a wage or salary and of course we pay taxes on that. Here's us, the taxpayer employee. And we're learning in uh, here in this chapter four, maybe our employer is providing us with fringe benefits. And better yet, some fringe benefits are tax free, or hopefully tax deferred when we get the benefit later on. One of those tax-deferred fringe benefits is if the employer sets up a retirement plan. So the common ones are uh, kind of, they're numbered, yeah? Like the 401k plan or 403b or 457. So hopefully your employer is contributing money into the plan for you. But many employers also require you to contribute through out of your paycheck. The good thing is that it reduces the taxable wage or salary for the year whenever they take money out. Okay, so you pay less taxes now. But then later on, when you take the money out, we call that distributions, it's going to be taxable. So in addition to this retirement a plan set up by your employer, in addition to social security coverage that hopefully will be there when you retire, you can save on your own, setting up your own retirement plan called a individual retirement arrangement or account. So we're going to be contributing money into this um, IRA every year, saving for retirement. Again, the word is called contributions. And the maximum dollar amount you can contribute each year, it's adjusted for inflation, but right now it's $6,000. And if you're age 60, not 60, but uh, 50 or older, you get to contribute another maximum of 1000 for a total of $7,000 per year per taxpayer. You need to have at least that amount of earned income, yeah, wages during the year, to make this amount of contribution of six or seven thousand dollars. Now we just saw in our textbook there's two different IRAs, the type that's called a Roth and a type called traditional. So when you put money into a Roth and or traditional, again, you're limited to 6000 or 7000 total per year. Not six per each year, but the total for all two types. So what's the benefit of putting in a Roth? Well, when you take the money out, assuming it's a qualified, again, we call taking money out distributions, When you take it out, it's going to be tax-free. Some conditions that you have to have is that the Roth account 
has to be at least five years old, or you have to have at least one Roth account. You could have many Roth accounts, one with your bank, one with your broker, one with a credit union. But the oldest Roth account has to be at least uh, five years old before you can start taking out tax-free. Another requirement is that you have to be older than age 59 and a half. Okay? If you take it out prior to that age, you may be penalized on some distributions. Okay, So the general rule is that it's tax-free when you take money out. Now, when you contribute money into the Roth account, there is no deduction, no benefit up front when you put money into a Roth IRA. The benefit is when you take it out and get a tax-free distribution. Now, an option is to contribute money into a traditional IRA. And the general rule is if you contribute into a traditional IRA, there is a deduction that you can subtract on your tax return. So that's what we're learning here really in chapter four. The deduction is first reported on this schedule number one. And here, some of the adjustments we've been learning in this chapter, including now a deduction for contributing into a traditional IRA. Again, if you make a contribution into a Roth IRA, there is no deduction. So the benefit here for contributing into a traditional IRA, a traditional, is that you get a deduction for that year. But now, when you make a distribution out of that uh, traditional IRA, it's going to be taxable. Also, if you distribute out before age 59 and a half, you get also penalized. Now, there's more detailed rules regarding how much you can contribute and how much you can deduct in, um, in this chapter. Okay, more detailed rules. So let's talk about the limit of contributing into a Roth. In addition to this six or seven thousand dollar dollar limit of contribution, in addition to you having to have earned income at least that amount, there is an income limit in the amount you can contribute. So let's take a look at an IRS publication that kind of summarizes all of these rules here. I have it linked in our Chapter 4 resources folder. Or you can just Google this uh, IRS publication 590A. And this over 60 page document just talks about only putting money in, contributing into an IRA. So let's take a look at the rule for contributing into a Roth IRA. Let's see now, page page 42. So again, we're talking about Roth, not traditional. We're talking about the adult, uh, limit of putting money into a Roth account, contributing. So we're going to look at the taxpayer's adjusted gross income it's so-called modified, not quite the AGI number on the tax return, but slightly different amount uh, reduced by backing out certain deductions or adding uh, certain income uh, back in. So if your filing status is married filing jointly and your modified AGI is less than 193000 then you can contribute the maximum dollar amount we had talked about, either the 6000 or the uh, $7,000 amount. There's no um, maximum age limit that stops when you can contribute to a Roth. For traditional, you have to stop contributing when you reach age 72. In the case of a Roth IRA, there's no maximum age you, can, you have to stop. Okay, so if your AGI is below this amount, you get the full contribution amount. If your AGI goes over 203000 you cannot contribute. Remember now, there's no deduction for Roth. 
Here we're talking about how much money you can put in. Now, if your AGI, modified AGI, falls within these two amounts, then the, the, then the maximum six or $7,000 amount starts to phase down. You can see the difference between these two amounts. The range of the phase out is 10,000. If you take a look at single individuals, if your modified AGI is a, under 122, then you get the full six or seven uh, dollar amount to contribute. If your AGI goes over 137, then you get to the, contribute nothing. If your AGI falls in between the two, then we're talking about a phase out range of 15,000, which for whatever reason, it's more than the 10,000 phase out range we have for a married couple. So let's take a look at an example here um, in this IRS publication. We have a 45-year-old, okay, so under 50. We don't get that extra thousand contribution. The filing status is single, and the uh, earnings is above the $6,000 amount, so we know we can contribute the maximum amount. We're not given any other income, so we're assuming that earnings is also the modified AGI. So let's, uh, so if you take a look at this table, the filing status is single, and we went over 122,000. So we cannot contribute the full 6,000. Again, the one extra 1,000 don't apply because our taxpayer is under age 50. But because we're under 137,000 modified AGI, we know we are able to contribute something. So there is a worksheet here. Let's see if I can find it. Here's a blank one. But for this example, we have a filled in one here on page 44. So here is our modified AGI. And in our example also, this is the earnings of our taxpayer. And what we're putting here in the next line is the, I believe, the upper limit where everything is phased out. Or was it the lower limit? Let me look at this again. It's the lower limit. Yeah, we just went over by a thousand. So here's the one thousand that we went over the lower limit. And here's that phase out range. Again, it would be 10,000 for joint, yeah, but for whatever reason, it's longer, wider, better for um, uh, single. So uh, we would take this 1,000 we went over, over the maximum range, and we went over by 6.7%. So we multiply that percentage by the maximum we can contribute without any limit. If we were again over 50, we can use 7,000. But our taxpayer here is only 45 years old. So when we multiply out this percentage times the maximum, here is the amount that you cannot contribute out of the maximum. So if you take the difference, here is the amount that you can contribute, $5,600 for the year, into a Roth account. There's just some adjustments here in case you've already made contributions during the year to determine the remaining you can contribute for the year. Again, 5600 Again, what we're calculating here is not how much you can deduct. You never get a deduction for a Roth IRA. What we're calculating is how much you can put in, contribute into the Roth account for this year. Let's take a look at our diagram again. So what we just did was figure out the maximum that you can put in here. So if you can put in just that 5,600, you still have another 4,400 you can put, was it 400? $402? $2? Anyway, the difference to come out a total of 6,000 for the year, and you can put it into a traditional IRA. More and more, I see uh, the Roth type 
account becoming more popular than the traditional? Uh, it depends which is better. If you can get an immediate deduction now and you're in a high tax bracket, and when you take out the money later on and you're in a low tax bracket, that's a good deal. Yeah. But again, in the case of a Roth, there is no benefit up front. But then later on, if you qualify, everything is tax-free. Now, let's talk about putting money into the traditional. Again, we call that contributions. But then there's a limit in how much you get to deduct in the year you make that contribution. And just like the Roth, the limit is based upon a modified AGI number, which is a little bit different than uh, the other modified AGI number. So let's take a look again in that IRS publication. And let's jump to page, to page, is it 10? Okay, so how much can you deduct when you contribute into a traditional, again, no deduction for Roth, yeah? The deduction is for traditional. So here's a table summarizing the rules. And this is a, a different table than the one we saw before. This is for a traditional IRA, where we're trying to figure out how much we can deduct, not contribute. We can contribute, again, either six or seven. There's no uh, dollar limit for traditional, yeah? We can contribute the whole six or seven. So the question is, how much can we deduct? And again, it's based upon the filing status. If you're a single, and your modified AGI is below 64, whatever you contribute, you can deduct the whole thing. If you're single filing status and your modified AGI is over 74,000, you still can contribute six or 7,000, but nothing is deductible, no benefit. Likewise, in the case of married filing joint, if your AGI is below this amount, whatever you contribute, full deduction. And if you're uh, over this amount, AGI, then nothing's deductible. Now there's a twist to this. There is, if you're, let's go back to my illustration here. Remember how you're possibly covered by an employer retirement plan? If you are not covered by the employer retirement plan, there is no modified AGI limit. You can deduct the whole thing. It's only if you're, you're covered by an employer retirement plan that this income limitations apply. Now, how do you know you're covered by an employer retirement plan? Well, what you got to do is take a look at your W-2 form that you get after the year's over. Of course, we had focused on this wage and withholding taxes here. But take a look at this box 13, and specifically this middle one. And if it's checked off, this retirement plan is checked off, that means this may apply to you. You're a covered, you're covered by an employer retirement plan. And this dollar limit of income is going to apply to you if you try to take a deduction in making a contribution to a traditional IRA. So another possible situation is if a taxpayer is covered and when they file a joint return with their spouse, the spouse is not covered by an employer retirement plan. Well, there's a phase-out range for that. So here we're talking about a married couple and the spouse is covered by an employer retirement plan. But this taxpayer is not covered. And if the modified AGI is less than 193, then the total contributions by both spouses are fully, well, the contribution made for this spouse that's not uh, covered is fully deductible. Again, the a spouse that is covered, you have to use these amounts over here, yeah? And if the AGI is more than this, 
the spouse who is not covered gets no deduction. Okay, probably no deduction for the, the spouse that is covered too, yeah. So again, if both spouses if both spouses not covered by the employer retirement plan, then probably all the contributions made, all deductible. If both spouses are covered by a retirement plan, then both spouses would use this first table here. Yeah, covered. And whether it's under this income or over this income, either fully deductible or not deductible. And again, if you fall within the two, there's a phase out range. You still can contribute the six or seven per person. But the question is, how much is of that is deductible? So let's go. And, and there's a worksheet that I think I'm not going to go through since this is going to make the video too long. You can try taking a look at this example here. I think it's this one here. And they may fill out a worksheet for you. Might be this example here. This is a better one on page 16. And they fill out this worksheet here for you to determine again not how much is can be contributed but how much is deductible okay so how much of your contribution can be deducted in the year you make that contribution and if you contribute more than what's deductible then you have a non-deductible contribution and eventually, when you start taking money out, distributions, this non-deductible contribution will come out tax-free. So back in Chapter 3, we went through the formula to figure out whenever you take out a distribution from a traditional IRA, how much of it is taxable and how much of it is tax-free recovery of the non-deductible contribution. Now, if you come across this situation for a taxpayer that's making a contribution into a traditional IRA and you have this non-deductible portion, what you should do, subject to the limitations we had talked about earlier, is to maybe take this money and contribute it into a Roth IRA. Because again, for Roth IRA, everything is tax-free both the contribution and the increase in earnings value here in the account. Whereas in the case of a traditional, it's only the non-deductible contribution, not the earnings that get taxed, uh, taken out tax-free. So what other forms do we need to look at? Here is uh, the form we keep track. I think we had seen this back in Chapter 3. So here is the amount of uh, non-deductible contributions we've made into our IRA accounts during the year. And here is the non-deductible from previous years. So when we add them up, here's the total amount we eventually will get back tax-free out of our traditional IRA accounts. The rest of this form is just to calculate how much, when we do take money out, is taxable and how much of it will be um, tax-free here. And then it, when you use this up, it gives you this remainder here that you move back up, I believe, in the line line number two. Yeah, And then here's the contributions that's not deductible for the, the next year. That's this form 8606. Another form we need is probably this 1099R. So in the year, we get a distribution from a IRA account. You'll see the amount received here and what is taxable. Okay. Now, if the company that pays you doesn't keep track of what's taxable, you need to figure it out like we had done back in Chapter 3. There's different codes you'll see here in this box number 7 based upon the type of distribution. Remember that if you were age 59 and a half, there may be a 10% penalty for early distributions. Also, if it's a Roth type distribution, 
it may be tax free. I'm look, we're looking at the back of these uh, the forms here, 1099R, to kind of see some of the different code letters uh, you can have. Possibly this is what you like to see. This is going to be all tax free here, yeah, from a Roth. The financial institution also probably is going to be sending the taxpayers uh, this form here. Usually, after the year's over by June um, June first, they're going to send this form fifty four ninety eight. That kind of summarizes things that happened in the previous year like uh, distributions from a traditional IRA, distributions from, sorry, this is contributions into a traditional IRA, contributions into a Roth account, um, the value of the account at the end of the year. When you reach age 72, you're required to take Required to take distributions from traditional IRAs. We call that required minimum distribution, a certain dollar amount that you have to take out each year. And it usually gets larger and larger depending upon your, um, your age. This doesn't apply. This RMD doesn't apply to Roth. Yeah? It only applies to, for the traditional type IRA. And we've seen also possible penalties uh, in an earlier video. If you take your money out again too early, age 59 and a half, there could be a 10% penalty uh, on the distribution. In the case of the Roth distribution, it's just the earning spot, not the amount you contributed. That gets back, paid back tax-free. It's only anything in excess of that that's subject to income tax and this additional 10% early distribution penalty tax. As we've seen before, there's uh, penalties for putting money, too much money in, you know, or here, more early unqualified distributions, or putting too much money in, excess contributions. Okay, and again, that age 72 penalty, you got to start distributing it by age 72, I think that's the last one here. They call it accumulation. You, you're keeping the money in the account too long, yeah? you got to start distributing that RMD, required minimum distribution, by age 72. Otherwise, there may be this big penalty that you should try to get abated if it applies. Okay, enough about IRAs. Uh, email me if you have questions. Make sure you read the textbook. Okay, talk to you later.